Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're going to be making Stilton cheese, specifically Blue Stilton. Now that is, of course, opposed to White Stilton, which we made on the channel before. I actually have made Blue Stilton before in uh, oh, 11 years ago. That's it. 11 years ago, I made my very first blue cheese video. Uh, I looked back at it the other day because I wanted to include uh, Blue Stilton in my cheese course, the blue cheese course, uh, over at the Kern Nerd Academy. And guess what? <laughs> the video quality was shocking. So not only did I want to try some blue cheese anyway, um, I decided to make another Stilton. And just check to see if the recipe stands up to the test of time uh, that I originally made. Guess what, it does, it's pretty good. So before we go any further, let me just uh, tell you a little bit about the origins of Stilton cheese. It was first made in the United Kingdom. It's called the King of Blue Cheeses in England. I dare say the King of Blue Cheeses in France would be Roquefort, but uh, this is not made with sheep's milk, it's made with cow's milk. Now, it has a bit of an uncanny link to my hometown of Melton, where I live. Um, let me just read this from my first book, Keep Calm and Make Cheese. It says, Stilton was first made in the early 18th century in England, in the Midlands, specifically in and around Melton Mowbray area. Stilton takes its name from the village of Stilton, uh, although no Stilton has ever been made there, maybe has now, um, located about 80 miles north of London on the Great North Road. Uh, it is here that the coaches travelling from London to Scotland and other northern cities made their first stops for fresh horses and overnight stays. Convenient to Melton Mowbray and the surrounding area, the village became the central marketplace for the cheese with thousands being sold each week. Thus, the blue cheese one would buy in Stilton became known as Stilton cheese. Uh, that's from the official Stilton Cheesemakers Association page. So there you go, Stilton was never made in Stilton. It was made in and around Melton Mowbray in the United Kingdom. A little bit of a link to my hometown of uh, Melton uh, in Victoria here in Australia. Very tenuous link, of course, but uh, a link nonetheless. I've only made some very minor changes to the recipe. Uh, so let me just show you how I made Blue Stilton cheese. So today I'm using milk by Inglenook Dairy and cream by Inglenook Dairy. Don't forget to sanitize all of your equipment. You can check out my sanitization video. The ingredients for Stilton style cheese are eight liters or 8.45 quarts of whole cow's milk. That's been pasteurized and unhomogenized. 500 milliliters or two cups of whipping cream. One eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture. I'm using Choose It MA 4001 or 4002. One sixteenth of a teaspoon of Penicillium Roque 40 mold powder. I'm using the strong variety. One quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 milliliters of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. One quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 milliliters of single strength rennet. I'm using IMCU 200 strength diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And two and a half tablespoons of non-iodized cheese salt. So throw all your milk into your pot and start heating it up. In the meantime, take some of that warmed milk and put your Penicillium Roque 40 powder into it. This allows it to rehydrate a lot faster and it mixes into the milk a lot easier when it comes time to add this ingredient. Now you may have to stir it a few times, but let that rehydrate for about five minutes. Now this is something I don't normally show, but I'm adding the calcium chloride to the water in my little measuring cup and then the rennet and adding the non-chlorinated water. Now notice that so I don't confuse anything I put the cup in front of the bottle that it came from. Giving the mold another stir there just to make sure it's all rehydrated through otherwise it simply just sits on top of the milk. 
So we're going to heat the milk to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just giving that a stir so the cream incorporates back into the milk. And just check the temperature. And yeah, it's at nearly at 30 degrees Celsius, so that's perfect. So I'm going to add the culture. Remember, I'm using MA4001 here. Now, I chose this culture because not only is it a fast acidifier, but it's normally used for farmhouse cheddar style cheeses. And I thought it would be a good match for this cheese. Now, add the mold. This is the rehydrated mold. The mold may have sunk to the bottom, so give that a bit of a swirl. And you might have to do that again. And you'll notice that that's really well incorporated into the milk. So you don't see any mold powder sitting or floating on top of the milk pot. So pop the lid on and allow all that to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, stir in the culture. Pop the lid on and now we're going to ripen the milk for 30 minutes. So 30 minutes later, we're going to put the rest of the ingredients in, just stirring that cream back in again if it's floated to the top. Now we're going to add the calcium chloride. This helps the curds set a lot better when using heat treated milk or pasteurized milk. And then we're going to add the rennet solution. So once you've added the rennet, stir for no more than one minute or it may start to set. So pop the lid back on. And we're going to set the curds for 90 minutes. So 90 minutes later, uh, I did a quick check ahead of time and the curds have set. But I've removed all the heating equipment. Just left the water in the sink. I'm going to check for a clean break. Yep, that looks pretty good. And I think Bonnie thinks so as well. We're going to line the colander with butter muslin. So this is a tight weave cheesecloth. Not the loose weave cheesecloth I normally use. So what we're going to do now is take slices of that off using a skimmer or a ladle and put those slices into the colander that's been lined with the butter muslin. Now this will take a little bit of time, but that's okay. There we go, slicing, slicing, slicing. Because we only used a little bit of rennet, uh, the, one of the reasons to do this is to stop the curd from fracturing. We don't actually cut it, we take the slices of it. Now to stop that all from falling off, just fold the corners of the cheesecloth over the top of the colander. So we're going to place the colander now into a large sanitized bowl so that it sits in its own way and then allow that to drain for 90 minutes. Notice that the bowl below is now full of whey. So we're going to tie the opposite corners of the cloth together to form a bag. And then I'm going to use a stainless steel hook. Just pop that there. And then I'm going to drain that somewhere safe. In my laundry, I've actually got some hanging rails in the laundry. So I've just hung that in there. Drain that for 30 minutes over a pot or you'll have a big mess. So 30 minutes later, back to the kitchen again. 
and pop the bag onto a large board and then tie the knots tightly so none of the curd escapes when we're doing the next part of the procedure. We're actually going to be pressing the bag of curds. So pop another board on top and then place four kilograms of weight. I'm just using two two litre bottles of water. So that gives me four kilos. I'm going to drain that for eight hours. Uh, no longer than that or the curds will dry out too much. And now a word from our sponsor, Little Green Workshops. That's me and Kim. That's our company. So to make this cheese, I thought I'd show you the two kits and baskets that I use to make it. So firstly, I use the ingredients uh, and the equipment from the Blue Cheese Kit, which we have for sale online. Uh, Blue Cheese Kit, and that has the Penicillium Rogue 40, the Starter Culture, if you want to use the MO30 or MA11, it's the same thing, um, plus the calcium chloride and all the other equipment, including the cheesecloth. Also, I used, not the basket from this one, it was a little bit too big for the 8 litre recipe, but I used the basket out of the blue cheese moulds that we have for sale as well. Uh, and I used specifically this 150 millimetre mould, uh, and you can see that's the shape of the cheese um, as we form it. So this was the perfect basket for the amount of milk that I used in this recipe, 8 litres plus 2 cups of cream. I uh, made a nice large firm Stilton cheese so uh, and these two here I've used for other blue cheeses and they're amazing they're just the right size uh, to cut a 8 litre or 10 litre batch down in half and make two cheeses out of it anyway so you don't need a press uh, it's all pressed by gravity uh, so like I said if you want to use the same basket I've only got 15 of these left so you can pick up uh, the blue cheese mold set of three uh, over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au You can use coupon code STILTON23 to get 10% off the Blue Cheese Kit and Blue Cheese Moulds 3-pack. Now back to the video. So remove the weights and the board off of the curds. And break up the curd mass into thumbnail size pieces and place them in a sanitized bowl. Now this may take a little bit of time, but the curd is fairly creamy and it is moist. It shouldn't be really dry. So just the final bit of curd there into the bowl. Now we're going to add the salt to the curds. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using two and a half tablespoons of non-iodized salt. Now, Stilton traditionally is a fairly salty cheese. So make sure they're level teaspoons. You don't want to go too overboard. There we go. Now mix the salt into the curds. This is called milling. Start placing your curds into the basket. Now, as I mentioned in the ad, I'm using a 150mm or 6 inch mould where I'm placing the curds into that. Now there should be sufficient air gaps in the curds for the mould to grow and create the veins. So just smooth out the top there. Just gently flatten that so there's a flat surface. Don't press down too hard. You don't want to fill all those gaps up. Or you won't get any vein development. And then we're going to drain on a mat for 15 minutes. Just put that on there. Just to assist the uh, way to flow a little bit better out of the bottom of the mould. Don't forget to put your umbrella on top to keep any of the beasties out. So we're going to flip the cheese every 15 minutes now for the next two hours. 
just put the mat on top of the open part of the basket just flip that over and once you've done that let the cheese drain overnight at room temperature and it should shrink a fair bit now flip the cheese four times a day for four days then at the fourth day you should see the blue mold should start to appear now the cheese should be fairly firm now and will be able to hold its shape and as you can see there the blue mold is just starting to grow that looks really cool you got some nice veining where the cracks are in the curds where those air gaps are and we want to get the blue mold to grow on the inside as well so there are air pockets there so let's create some oxygen flow by piercing it with a sanitized thermometer probe or a large knitting needle anything that makes large holes in there is perfect and as I said, it allows oxygen to reach the inside of the cheese so that the Penicillium Roke 40 mold can grow the veins. Now poke as many holes as you like, but more is better. So on the sides and top and bottom. There you go, there's the pierced cheese looking pretty amazing so I'm going to vary from how I normally ripen the cheese I've got a big ripening box there I've sanitized it I'm just wiping that dry with paper towel now I'm going to use a sanitized cheesecloth this is a loose weave cheesecloth and I'm going to wrap the cheese up like a bit of a baby so this will soak up some of the moisture and still allow airflow into the cheese so I'm going to pop three layers of paper towel on the bottom of the ripening box as a, a pseudo mat so I'm not using a mat like I normally would now the paper towel will absorb some of the moisture as well. So we're going to ripen the cheese in the cheese fridge now at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit. Now turn and change the paper towel weekly or it will become too moist in the box. So there you have it. That's how you make blue Stilton. I tried a little bit of a different method this time as you saw. I've wrapped it in cloth. Now let's have a quick look at it. It's, so I'm just going to take it out of the container. And this is what I'm using to keep the moisture off, paper towel, and I change it every week. Um, and you can see that the, the bottom of the uh, ripening box I'm using, it's rather large because the cheese is large. Um, bottom of the ripening box is, it's not wet. This is, this is damp, um, but this will go on the bin. Um, and I'll replace the paper towel at the bottom uh, just with a bit more paper towel. There you go, some dry stuff. So we'll change that every so often. So instead of using a mat, let's open it up, have a quick look. Now, we've got some good oxygen because it's still quite blue, which that's what I like. I like that. So the oxygen is still, because I've been changing it every week, and we're not changing the cloth, the cloth is staying the same. I've been changing, uh, unwrapping it, checking it letting it have a bit of air because oxygen is essential for the blue cheese to remain blue if you starve it of oxygen then it turns a, a yucky red uh, orangey color and goes very sticky and the veins instead of being blue on the inside they tend to be brown so make sure it's got lots of ox oxygen and that you're turning it and emptying the ripening box of any um, ammonia or anything else that's built up and give it a fresh supply of oxygen at least once a week um, just be aware if you don't that's what's going to happen it's going to go a horrible color now I'm going to age this Stilton um, for well 90 days is the minimum you should before you get some decent vein development within um, it looks pretty good I'm not going to um, and none of the blue's coming off my hands, which is perfect because that's, you know, what the cloth is for. This is just a loose weave cheesecloth. You can see it's a little bit gungy. 
um, but that's because it's protecting the blue cheese um, and stopping the blue mold from going rampant. It's just a good protective cover. So um, this is really the only part of the process that have changed is the affinage uh, and it seems to be working well so far. So this cheese has been aging for one month already. So I made it on Anzac Day, 25th of April, uh, 2023. Uh, so as of filming today, it's a month into its maturation. Uh, it ha it's still quite firm. Uh, it hasn't uh, started to go squishy or anything like that. And the blue mold is really kind of contained because of the use of this cloth. Now the cloth looks a bit manky, but it's protecting the cheese. So. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, the last thing I want is it to be oozy and runny on the outside with lots of excessive mold growth. So I'm going to wrap it back up now and continue to age it for at least another two months, so a total of 90 days. Uh, if you want it a little bit stronger, you could push that out to four months and it would be a much stronger blue cheese. So without sticking, you know, doing a cheese trier and sticking and making a core a little bit early for that. Uh, I'm going to leave it and uh, I will test it at the three month mark with the cheese trier to get a core sample and have a look to make sure that the blue mold is growing throughout the cheese and that the paste is starting to uh, to go a little bit oozier than it normally would be. And that chalkiness has gone away. So fantastic looking cheese. I'm very excited. Um, join me back in two months time when I will be doing a taste test on this rather large looking Stilton. Now if you want to get the recipe for this cheese, it is in the first book, Keep Calm and Make Cheese, link down below. However, I'm going to create a specific recipe card for this version uh, and I will put a link down below as well for the recipe card. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds. And I'll see you next time.